Right across the street from the National Constitution Center, you can take a visit to Independence Hall. It's here that the Declaration of Independence was signed. Take a look. During the late 1760s, resentment against British rule began to grow in colonial America. Taxes imposed by Britain sparked angry protests. These disputes soon turned violent and led in 1775 to the first battles of the American Revolution. Despite the fighting, few colonists openly called for independence at first. Only one third of the colonists wanted a rebellion, another third were against it, and the remaining third were indifferent. But public opinion began to shift, helped in part by a pamphlet written by Thomas Paine, an Englishman recently arrived in America. Paine had difficulty finding a typesetter to print his work as it would be considered treasonous. Finally, in January of 1776, a rebel printer published it. The pamphlet was called Common Sense. In its 47 pages, Paine made the case for independence by attacking the idea that Britain's king should rule the American colonies. Common sense was read aloud from street corners and pulpits and in taverns, parlors, and schools. On June 7, 1776, a member of the Continental Congress meeting in Philadelphia voiced the idea of independence. Richard Henry Lee, a tobacco planter from Virginia, rose to offer a resolution. That these United Colonies are free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown. Congress appointed a five-man committee to draft a Declaration of Independence. The members included Benjamin Franklin and John Adams. But none of the senior members wanted the job of writing it. They believed the document itself would be an historical footnote, a technicality. As a result, the task was given to the committee's youngest member, 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson. Working for two days and nights in his second-story rented room, Jefferson bent over his portable writing table and produced the first draft of the most enduring protest document in the history of the free world. Jefferson's magnificent words were not wholly original. He borrowed from fellow Virginian George Mason who in turn had borrowed from the 17th century British philosopher John Locke. Just weeks earlier, Mason had written in the preamble to the Virginia Constitution that all men by nature are equally free and independent and have certain inherent rights, namely the enjoyment of life and liberty. There's nothing new in the Declaration of Independence. If its arguments hadn't been familiar and understandable, it wouldn't have been a very powerful document of justification. After nine hours of heated debate, Congress passed the resolution for independence. Thirteen separate English colonies now called themselves the United States of America. The vote for independence came on July 2nd, 1776, a date John Adams was certain would go down in history. Two days later, on the 4th, the delegates approved the text of Jefferson's Declaration. About a month later, a formal copy of the Declaration was ready to be signed by all the members of Congress. The President of Congress, John Hancock, was the first to sign the document. In fewer than 40 words, Jefferson defined the ideals of the newborn nation in the Declaration's opening words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, it's your turn to answer a question. What are some values set forth in the Declaration of Independence?